friends welcome or welcome back to my channel in today's video you guys i am so excited i have kind of like a peppermint themed diy video for you so if that's something you're interested in i would love if you would stick around don't forget to click that red subscribe button and then just tap that bell and all that way you're notified every single time i upload that way you don't miss a crafty moment also don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well because all those little things help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Also, I would love to thank Acorn TV for sponsoring today's video and I would love to tell you guys a little bit about them in just a bit. So with all that being said, let's jump into today's DIYs. Okay guys, so before we start, I just wanted to let you guys know, please go over and check out my friend Jackie from Blessed Beyond Measure. She was severely affected from the tornadoes that passed this past weekend. She completely lost everything, her and her family. Her house is completely destroyed. So if you have it in your heart, go over, check her out on her channel, watch the ads, check out her videos. She also has a Ko-Fi account in her description box that you can donate to. Too. So there's definitely many ways to support her, but I did just want to mention that before I start my video because she is a dear friend and I would love to help her in any way possible. So anyway, with all that being said, let's jump into today's DIYs. Okay guys, so to start off this first project, this is probably my favorite project in the whole video. Of course, you guys can let me know in the comments, but I start off with 12 of the birdhouses from Dollar Tree, and I just took a bunch of pieces of scrap wood in my scrap wood pile. This is a piece of poplar that I get from Home Depot, but you can use wooden rollers from Dollar Tree, or you can use stir sticks. There's so many different things you can use for this, but like I said, I just use scrap wood that I had. So I started off by laying down two of the birdhouses and then putting them on top of the wood, marking it, and then cutting it. But this is fine for the bottom row. So I do two at the bottom, then four, three, two, one. So for the bottom two, that's fine. But for the others, you want to put them together and then lay your stick on top and mark from roof to roof if that makes sense because if you do it the way that I was doing it um, I ended up having to go back and cut more pieces and then attach those to the bottom of the other pieces which was a total waste of time so don't waste your time do as I say, not as I do, and mark from roof to roof piece. That way, once you um, glue all of your pieces together, then they'll glue together nicely. I also wanted to mention, do not try to break these apart. Once you glue them down, um, once I glued down that first piece of wood, I was going to try to take it off to attach the new pieces that I cut, but these are super cheap, so they just broke right apart. So I did just have to end up attaching the piece to the original piece of wood. So if that made no sense, then you can see what I'm doing here. You can also see I'm showing you where the birdhouse was coming apart. And I did just glue that back together before I totally destroyed it. I also took my little mini zip sander and I sanded down all of the edges smooth. Once I had all of my layers glued together, then I go in with my Dixie Belt Voodoo Gel Stain. You guys, I love this. It's just like the stain that we make with paint and water, but it's actual stain. It dries super quick. It's water-based, so it doesn't stink, and I love it so much. So I did stain two of the layers with that. I painted two of the layers in the white and then I painted one of the layers with my Dixie Belle Barn Red.
and this is the moment that it comes together and I am so excited to put it all together. So once I had this part done, then I was kind of unsure what I wanted to do. So I ultimately decided to transfer on all of the numbers one through 12. For the brown boxes, I transferred on with gold. For the white boxes, I transferred on the numbers in my red chalk paste. And then obviously for the red, I transferred it on with my white chalk paste. Don't forget to always quickly wash your transfers once you're done using the paste. That way you can use these over and over again as long as you take care of them properly. They should last you upwards of 20 uses, if not more. Okay, so my Dollar Tree did not have 12 birdhouses of the exact same pattern. So I had to kind of maneuver the numbers on there, but in the end, it looked amazing. So no harm, no foul. Now for the last one, number 12, there was no way that the two was fitting. So I just carefully pulled out the, I think it's kind of like a skewer or a dowel rod for the perch. So I just gently pulled that out. I did try to do that on several of them and again it just wanted to break apart that's why I didn't do that in the beginning but for the 12 I was bound and determined to get the two to fit on there so I just carefully worked that out and then once I was done transferring on the two then I just attached that back in with some hot glue So for the number eight, I messed it up and I just wanted to show you guys how to fix it. It's super easy if you're not working on a chalkboard. When you're working on a chalkboard, it just wipes clean. It's super easy. But when you're working on a painted surface, the easiest way is to just kind of blot it off if the color is light enough. But for this, this is red, it was super bright. So I neutralized it with green first and then I went back in with the white and it covered up super easy. It's kind of like makeup. Um, they sell green concealer to cover up the redness and then you can cover it with your makeup and you can't see it. So it's kind of the same, it's kind of the same concept with painting. Next, I go in with my antique wax and I dry brush all the way around all of my white boxes. Next I go in with my white Dixie Belle. That's weird saying that. I'm usually, I'm used to saying Waverly chalk paint. I go in with my cotton Dixie Belle and I also dry brush all the way around the stained boxes. And I also forgot that I did do the red boxes with the cotton Dixie Belle paint as well. Now this next step I cannot take credit for. This was my sweet subscriber Christine's idea. She is a really, really good friend of mine. I'd actually call her one of my best friends. Christine, I love you so much. Thank you so much for this amazing idea. But she came up with the amazing idea to put a light coat of glitter on these. So what I did was took some gloss Mod Podge from Dollar Tree and some of my gold Arteza glitter. And I didn't go overboard with the glitter, but I just lightly put a splash of glitter in the Mod Podge and then covered all of my boxes. Once the coat was done, then I did go in for a second coat just because y'all know I'm extra and I like it shiny, um, but I did do two coats and it's your choice if you want to do one or five or none. That's totally up to you. So once they were completely dry, now is the fun part, putting it all together. So I just took some of my 
wood glue hot glue and I just glued on top of the roof parts and then glued my pieces down. Now this was a little wobbly and it did not glue together perfectly but mine is not at a place where it's going to fall down so I wasn't too worried about it. If you're worried about it you can go from the back and then just put like a glob of hot glue where each roof part meets the wood piece if that makes sense. OMG you guys that spin on that turntable I cannot get enough of it the glitter on these boxes in the light I love it so much that gold against that barn red Dixie Belle paint I know a lot of you guys cannot get the Waverly paint anymore you guys Dixie Belle is so much better than Waverly I will leave a link in the description box go check it out it's chalk paint it's amazing paint it goes on so buttery smooth and I promise you won't regret it again I know you guys can't get it a lot of you can't get it and I'm always looking for ways to help you guys out so when Dixie Belle sent me some stuff I could not wait to test it out and I love this project I think those colors just make it pop so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of my favorite project in this video Again, I would like to thank Acorn TV for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys have never heard of Acorn TV, Acorn TV is the largest commercial free British streaming service that offers compelling stories, exclusive premieres and originals you won't find anywhere else. They also offer a wide variety of world class mysteries, drama, comedies and docuseries. You guys, my favorite thing about Acorn TV is that most of the main characters are women. And it really reminds me of like a British Lifetime TV or something. I love it so much. I was really nervous that my husband like wouldn't watch it because he's super picky about TV shows. But I was super surprised when he sat there and he actually loved it as well as the kids. The shows that me and my family have been enjoying are Hinterland and A Place to Call Home. Hinterland is a crime drama set in Wales, Netherlands, where a troubled DCI Tom Matthias solves, murder, solves murders while searching for redemption from his troubled past. And then me and Isabella's favorite is A Place to Call Home, which is set in the 50s where the main character, Sarah Adams, goes back home to Australia after like 20 years of being away it's really good and it leaves me and Isabella literally sitting there enjoying time together and I could not be more grateful for that So if you guys are like me and you're tired of traditional TV and you're tired of watching the same things over and over and over, start streaming today for a free 30 days by going to acorn.tv and type in all things crafty at checkout. That is go to acorn.tv and type in all things crafty at checkout for a free 30 days. You guys don't have anything to lose. You can cancel anytime. So if you don't like it within that 30 days, you can cancel it. So just check it out, you guys. I know you'll love it as much as I do. And thank you again, Acorn TV, for sponsoring today's video. Moving on to DIY number two. Now back in the fall time, I made this book stack and it was a spooky book stack and I could not wait to make one for Christmas time. Now this one is peppermint themed, but you can make this whatever theme you like. I start off with these boxes from Dollar Tree. These are the nesting boxes that look like books and I paint the biggest one with my barn red Dixie Belle. Now scatterbrain me, let this drying on the wet paint, left this drying on the wet paint. So I just go in with my Christmas scrapbook paper and I measure it out, cut it down to size and then glue it down with my disappearing purple glue stick. I like that so much that I flipped it over and I did the back side the exact same way.
While those were drying, I went on to the next two boxes. So for one of them, I painted it with my cotton Dixie Belle paint. And then for the next one, I painted it with my truffle paint. And before I painted it, I took some of my Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree and just glued them on all three sides on the inside. That way, once I shut this cover, I have something to glue it to. Because if you try to glue to that little edge, it's hard to get your hot glue directly on there and then it's a mess. So doing it this way just makes your life so much easier. Next, I go in with a piece of foam board. I lay the spine of my book down on my foam board. I mark it and then use my utility knife to cut that piece out. To make this look like a piece of wood, you just want to rough it up. So I take my fingernail and just put some knots in there. I then take something sharp and put some holes and scratches because just like a natural piece of wood, this should not look perfect. I then go in with my antique wax and my clear wax and a bath sponge from Dollar Tree cut in four. I, we're just going to use one quarter of it and I start by making some streaks. I let that dry. Then I go in with some ink Waverly chalk paint alternating between colors going on the edges and there's really no rhyme or reason to this technique. You do it to your liking and to your eyes are happy. Once that was dry, then I glued it down to the spine of our book with some hot glue and then I went in with my chip brush and my Dixie Belle cotton paint and dry brushed all over that piece again to make it look more realistic. I then used the same paint and the same brush and I dry brushed all the way around this book to make the entire thing look cohesive. I do the same thing for the red book and then for the next book I use my antique wax to dry brush on the white one as well. Now to decorate these, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do, but I remembered that I had this red and white clay from Dollar Tree. So I took some out. I had my little helper help me and we just started off with a piece of red and rolled it into a skinny straw, I guess. I don't really know what you want to call it, but I just rolled it out to a long string, I guess. And then I did the exact same thing for the white. Once that was done, then I just kind of twirled them together, being very careful because if you pull too hard, this will come apart. And if you're too soft, then it just doesn't do anything. So you kind of have to have the perfect amount of pressure, um, but no worries. There's plenty of it. Um, try it. If you mess it up, you can always do it again and again. This was actually super therapeutic. I loved it so much and Sophia had an amazing time doing it with me as well. So get your kiddos involved, get your grandkids involved, or just have a crafting therapy session. Sit and uh, make some cool little candies or candy canes. I don't really know. The possibilities are endless and it's totally up to you what you want to make. But with the leftover excess that I had from the first candy cane that I made after I shaped it into a candy cane, then I just kind of twirled it around um, and then stuck a dowel rod in the end and made a tiny lollipop. I also made another little candy as well as a second candy cane and I flipped the second candy cane over and made a heart out of it. 
Now for this transfer, you guys, this thing has a story. So I took it out of my shed and was going to make signs with it that night. We were heading to Walmart, so I put it in my husband's truck. He took it out to put the groceries in and left it on the back of his truck. We get home and he's like, where's the transfer? I said, I don't know. He had to go back to Walmart. He had to go back to Walmart and found it in the road. It was raining. It was wet. But guess what, you guys? These things are so durable. It was just fine. I took it off of the backing sheet that was soaking wet. I put it on a few backing sheets that I had, and all was good. So once I cut up my transfer, then I go in with my little heart candy cane. I glue that down to the middle, being very careful because I am super impatient and I could not wait for it to air dry. So I had to just glue it down uh, wet. I then kind of laid the other candies out. I didn't really like the way they looked. So I just went in my transfer stash, picked out some more um, transfers that I thought would look cute. And I ultimately decide on the mistletoe because it has that greenery in it. I thought that it would be pretty to bring that green against that brown and that red. I then transferred on a candy cane to the faux wood green. Originally, I used my glitter red, but you couldn't really see it. So I went in with my white. For the back side of the white book, I went in with my This Way to the Peppermint Forest that was in that same transfer that I just cut up that got stuck in the rain that my husband went and rescued. <laughs> what a kind, generous man. I love him so much. He's so sweet. Anyway, um, I go in with the other side of my book stack. Originally, I went in with the bow, but I didn't really like the way that it looked, so I went in my... Uh, scrapbook stash again I picked out this uh, patterned white and red transfer I measured it or not transfer scrapbook paper I measured it out cut it down and then once again glued it down now for the tops of the um, white and brown books I forgot to mention that while the paint was drying I did streak some antique wax just to kind of give it dim some dimension and look like book pages um so i did just want to mention that i forgot to tell you guys that but that was it you guys i love this book stack so much at first i wasn't too sure about it i was like oh, i'm not too sure this isn't really my style but the more i look at it it's growing on me i love it so much let me know in the comments down below is this like uh, i'm not really too sure about this book stack or do you guys love this diy Okay, friends, last DIY. Now, this one is super simple. You guys, usually I would paint a Dollar Tree sign and put a frame around it, but I was in a rush to get this video up for you guys. So I just took one of my Chalk Couture surfaces. Um, you can get this if you like, but you don't have to. You can get a Dollar Tree sign, paint it with whatever color you like, and then take your transfer and transfer on the wording with again whatever color you like i chose my black chalk paste and originally i used my glitter red but i didn't like how dull it was so i did just go in with my candy apple and look how easy that was you guys this literally took me two minutes it was a little messed up so all i did was take a q-tip with some water and clean that spot right up and look how amazing and high-end this looks you guys don't forget you can reuse these over and over as long as you take care of them so wash them after every use lay them sticky side up to dry and then stick them on your backing sheet and use them over and over again so i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to check out acorn tv i love their streaming service i know you will too also don't forget to check out my dear friend jackie at blessed beyond measure she could really use all of our support right now whatever that may look like Rather, it's donating, watching her videos, clicking on the ads. There's so many different ways you can support your favorite creators other than monetarily. If you can donate, that would be amazing. She needs everything, literally, and it's Christmas time. So if you can donate, that would be amazing. But if not, 
totally understandable. There's prayers, there's thoughts watching her videos. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you a part of my crafty family. And don't forget to share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well. And with all that being said, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.